Today, we are going to be making a slip dress similar to the one worn by our female Ginny avatar on the right of the screen. You can download the basic type of slip from the link in the description box. In this video, we are only going to be focusing on the principles of pleating of the front panel. First, open the downloaded basic slip dress file from Connect. Using the Transform Pattern tool, drag the mouse to select the entire 2D pattern. Once selected, right-click and select Strengthen, and then Let's Simulate. Once you've simulated and checked the overall fit of the dress, freeze all of the patterns except the one that we want to work on. It's helpful to think of this as freezing the garment in place so that you can work on it. Let's take another look at the garment that we will be creating today. If you look closely, you can see that this garment is asymmetrical. Only the top pattern of the front panel has the gathering and the bottom does not. Therefore, you must remove the linked editing from the patterns to work asymmetrically. Select the upper panel pattern with the Transform Pattern tool. Right-click and select Remove Linked Editing. You will see that the blue highlights on the patterns have disappeared. This means that the linked editing has been removed from those patterns. Now let's get down to business and create the gathering on that upper panel. First, select the internal polygon line tool from the 2D pattern window toolbar. The first step is to use the tool to draw on the 2D pattern, lines of a similar shape and number to the creases we see on the image. However, just because the pleats in the image are from the inside of the garment, you shouldn't draw the internal lines in the center of the pattern. You need to draw them from edge to edge or seam to seam like we do here in the video. If you draw a line in the 2D pattern window, the 3D window will show the same location of the inner line. Once you're done, if you're not happy with the line placements, you can use the Edit Pattern tool to reposition the line segments. Now that we have the approximate location of the folds, let's apply those creases. If you hover over the Edit Pattern tool group, the second tool from the bottom is called the Slash and Spread tool. This tool is quite literal. We will slash along a line and spread the pattern open like you would a piece of paper. We can use it to create the creases or add volume. When you select the tool, the screen will prompt you to click on a segment to draw a slash line, aka select a line segment to slash open. Once you select a segment, you'll see an arrow like this. The arrow indicates where the volume will be placed. So you want to make sure that the direction of the arrow is to the right side of the left pattern, which is the direction that the pattern is going to open, which is where the crease is going to be. I select the segment line and the message on the screen changed to select the side to rotate. Select the side of the pattern that you want to rotate and spread the pattern out along those lines that we made earlier. Now that we have the creases open, let's draw the fold line to direct the crease. Again, hover over the Edit Pattern Tool group and select the Add Point Slash Split Line tool. Right-click on the segment that is spaced apart by the amount of the crease and you should see a dialog pop up like the one below. At the bottom of the dialog is Uniform Split, and if you type in the number 2, it will create a point that bisects the selected line segment. Next, use the Internal Polygon Line tool to draw a fold line for the Once you're done, let's fold the pleats by selecting the Pleats Fold tool from the 2D toolbar. If you look at the image of the finished garment again, you can see that the pleats are folded from the bottom up, so just click the direction of the pleats. Click the mouse button in the directions the wrinkles will go. A dialog will pop up and I'll just hit OK to finish. 
The hardest part here is actually the sewing because every time we open up one pleat, we have to modify the side seams one by one. First, select the Edit Sewing tool. If you look at the screen, you can see that I've created the pleats, but the side seams are one-to-one -one sewing. We will need to edit these manually. First, let's remove the pleats from the sewing relationship so only the original seams are sewn in the one-to-one -one ratio. Select the free sewing tool and sewing the bottom part one to one as shown on the screen, excluding the wrinkles. Once done, continue to sew the crease with the free sewing tool. Since the crease will be folded around the green inner line shown on the screen, sew the two face lines of the pleats together like this. Then when the pleat folds upward, you'll want to sew another two facing lines around this red inner line like this. Take your time. When done, select the front panel pattern in the 3D window and choose the Reset 3D Arrangement from the right-click menu. Use the gizmo to rearrange the pattern, and when you're done, simulate. I'm hoping that you've done a good job of getting all the folds in one go. Let's do the same for the rest of the pleats. Once you've got something that looks like this, it's time to add some detail to the creases. In the 2D pattern window, select the Edit Pattern tool. Select the end point of the inner line and correct the position one by one. At this time, you may have to move the position of the line while pressing Control to maintain the angle of the inner line. When you're done, you can simulate to see how the wrinkles have changed. Selecting the entire garment, unfreeze and strengthen it. Then unstrengthen once again. Now, if you look in the 3D window, you'll see that the pleats are folded very tightly, like a paper fold. We're going to adjust some of these folds so that they are a little bit thicker. Refreeze everything but that uppermost panel. Then select the Pleats Fold tool again to open the dialog box. If you look at the fold angle as shown, the default angle was 0 to 360. The closer this angle gets to 180, the less of a fold angle there will be, so the pleats won't be as tightly folded and will have a more natural, or in this case, a thicker look. Go ahead and correct the fold angle in the same way for the rest. Next, with the Edit Pattern tool selected, Double-click on the screen to use the Lasso Selection option. I'm going to use it to select the entire internal line segment that corresponds to the crease. Then, edit them in the Property Editor on the right. If you select the line segment with the fold angle applied, you can also see the fold strength like this. Let's reduce this strength to 1. Now let's go ahead and unstrengthen and continue working.
If you look at the 3D window and you don't like where the creases are, you can go back to the Edit Pattern tool and modify them. You can easily change the position or shape of the crease by selecting and moving the three points that make up the crease at the same time as shown here. Once you're done, go ahead and unfreeze slash unstrengthen the pattern again, and then simulate. Then, in the Property Editor, lower the particle distance to 10. By adjusting the particle distance, the wrinkles look much more natural than they did in the beginning stages. Next, let's look at the wireframe of the pattern, this time in the 3D window. If you look at the screen, you can see that the mesh of the pattern is triangular. We are only going to remesh the panels that are wrinkled to make them lay a little flatter. In this case, this looks a bit more interesting. After remeshing, this will turn the face pattern into a clean square mesh. If you do the simulation, you can see that the wrinkles look a bit more stylized. Finally, let's change the fabric properties. Please open the fabric window on the right and select the default fabric. If you look at the bottom physical property in the property editor, you can apply preset properties. Here I'm going to change the properties to silk duchess satin, which is a similar material to the dress we're working on today. Changing the material type of the fabric to silk satin will give it a shiny exterior and make it look more realistic. For this tutorial, we will keep the dress a solid color, so change the color of the dress to finish it off. And we are all done with this dress. Let us know if you have any questions and we will be happy to answer them in the comments section.